Today we're making yam cottage pie, and it ain't your grandma's version. Here's what you'll need. We're going to go ahead and start by peeling the yams. You could also use sweet potatoes, but right now we're using yams. You're going to need about two pounds total. I'm just going to end up, put them into just like smaller chunks. You can just rough chop them. Make sure they're all in equal sizes so they all boil and cook at the same time. Now that we got our pot boiling, ready to go, just go ahead and just just gonna let it boil until it's fork tender. So we need about half an onion, diced. Onion cutting, some people t say that you should wash the knife or wash the onion down. No. All you really need for onion cutting so you don't fry your eyes out is a sharp knife. Three fourths of garlic. Just like you do an onion in a smaller scale. So, we did say this is not your grandmother's cottage pie, right? Rhubarb. So you might recognize this as a star of one of your favorite desserts, but today we're using this as a unique ingredient to our savory dish. Make sure you want it minced. This always reminds me of Bugs Bunny. Cut the ends off. I'm just gonna add peel them. Because they're very tiny. We're just gonna go ahead and just make this slice this. Almost kind of a brunoise. It's a brunoise? Like small dice. Everyone in the English speaking world knows that. God. Alright, now for sweet potatoes. Try to check them. If they're fork tender, then they're done. Yeah. Slide right off. Boy, well, look at that. That's my failed attempt for an Irish action. Putting it back into the pan. Get nuts. Then we're gonna get one stick of butter. Stick? Yes, a whole stick of butter. Yes. We're gonna get collagen. Add about three quarters cups of almond milk. And yeah, a little cinnamon, actually. An eighth of a teaspoon. I'm gonna set aside and we'll use it in a little bit. Remember, don't ever wash your mushrooms. Just give them a nice little pat dry with a paper towel and they should be all right. You don't want to wash away all that earthy flavor that comes with it. Put them in thin slices. I love mushrooms, they just give it the whole dish like a different dimension, earthy, and give it like a meaty texture to it. We're gonna use about three sage leaves. We're just gonna chiffonade them instead of mincing them. Can you say what chiffonade is, please? Chiffonade is a dozen to ribbons. Lots Thank of you. Perfect. And we're gonna put them aside with here. Look at that little mise en place. Perfect. A what? Mise en place. Can you explain what that is? Mise en place means everything's in place. Next, we're gonna use thyme. Awesome tip for thyme is grab the fat end, hold the, and just kind of slide down. And you'll get up the leaves. Now we're all dressed up and ready to go. Start by heating your oil. I'm using coconut oil. I know a lot of you don't like coconut oil. You all got problems. You can use butter or bacon grease if you want to. Bacon grease if you want to. Let's bring our meat. Perfect. We'll start with onions. We're starting with onions because they stand the most heat. We're gonna put the carrots as well because they take a while to soften. Cook them for about Five minutes, then we start adding everything else. We're gonna add the garlic. Until it's a little well in the center. Add your garlic. Our lovely rhubarb. Not yet, not your turn yet. Come down. Rhubarb to me tastes like um, star fruit. It reminds me of star fruit. It has that like uh, fruity taste to it. It's like tart and yeah. yeah, there you go. Or what's the other name for it? Carambola. Carambola. Mm. Very um, Three minutes. colorful mirepoix. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Except mirepoix uses celery. Oh, damn it. By the end of this, we'll all know culinary jargon. Food French. Mushrooms can actually stand a lot of heat, too. All right, now make a well. 
Yeah. We're gonna add our bait. Okay. Yeah. Perfect to go. Now we are ready for our aromatics. That means our herbs. Pretty. I'm using veg. You can also use beef stock if you like, but I'm using veg stock because that's what I have. Peas water. I'm just gonna go ahead and let this simmer. We don't have a lid for this pan, so we're using this one. Just I call it resourceful. All right. Now that we've uh, cooked it and simmered for about 15 minutes, covered, we're just gonna simmer it down, uncovered, for 10 minutes, just to get everything reduced down. All right, so now that it's reduced, we're gonna go ahead and add our tapioca flour just to tighten everything up. About a teaspoon. In case you didn't know, tapioca flour is made out of uh, cassava root. Bet you didn't know that one, right? All right, now it's time to transfer in an oven safe dish. We're gonna bake it. What? First layer is the meat. Now we're gonna add our sweet potatoes. Now for the fun part. Oh, that wasn't fun? No. It was, but this is the best part. Dallops of goat cheese. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. All right, in a 350 degree oven, just go ahead and bake it for 15 minutes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, here it's hard. Put my phone. Thank you for watching Roll of Yum. If you like our videos, please hit subscribe. And if you want more recipes or see some stuff that we reblog, you can check us out at ruleofyum.tumblr.com. Happy nomming! Blah 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 Give me the clap. Give me the clap. <laughs> give me the clap. I'll give you the clap. No, ew. No, no I'd rather you not. I don't have it. Unless you have it.